the Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Are you awake now? Let's try that again. Are you ready? This is me, Jen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. This morning is supposed to be a morning of great joy, right? It's supposed to be beautiful, and we're supposed to have on our most adoring clothes, and we're supposed to be prepared and to be joyful for everything that's supposed to happen, right? I mean, that's why you came here this morning, is to hear all the good news, right? And look at all of the pretty, look at all the pretty stuff. <laughs> we have all these shiny horns, well, kind of shiny horns. We have all these beautiful sounding shiny horns over here, and these wonderful people, and all of this stuff up here and all these flowers, right? And the cross on Friday had the thorns on top, as Melody reminded us this morning, and it had a black grape on it this morning. It's white, and everything's supposed to be beautiful, right? Right? Right. When Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, the other Mary, by the way, is who? Jesus' is mom. Jesus' is mom, for those of you that were wondering, right? Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, went to the tomb. And they went, what were they going to do that morning? And what were they thinking? What were they feeling? Right? These two women had just seen, not two days before, Jesus beaten to almost death. Nailed to a cross. Wrapped in linen cloths and thrown into a, well not thrown, but laid nicely into a tomb. And a big rock put in front of it, bigger than this one. Right? A bigger rock was thrown in front of the door, and guards were placed there. Right? We'll come back to those guards a little bit later. They've gone to the tomb this morning in fear. They've gone to the tomb this morning in anguish. They've gone to the tomb this morning in sadness. They weren't going to go there and be able to see the body. Because remember, there's a big rock in front of the door. And not only a big rock, but there's also guards there. So what were they going to do there? Why were they even going to the tomb in the first place? This morning we come here to hear the message of good news. You came here this morning to hear that Christ rose from the dead. When Mary Magdalene and Mary went to the tomb, they didn't expect to see the stone rolled away. They didn't expect to see the guards on their faces. They didn't expect to see the empty tomb. They expected that Jesus was dead. And he was still going to be in the tomb. Because... When people die, they stay dead. They normally don't get up and walk out of their tombs. You expected to hear that Jesus is alive, but these women went to the tomb without knowing what was going to happen. They went to the tomb expecting to find their dead friend, their dead son. But instead, on the way there, the earth quaked as it did when Jesus died. And the rock rolled. And the guards fell down as if they were dead. Dead. Interesting choice of words. The guards fell down as if they were dead. And when the women got there, they saw that the stone had been rolled away and that the tomb was empty. And there was angels in there saying, to quote Luke, not Matthew, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here. Because why you came here this morning is true. Jesus is alive. Jesus is no longer in the tomb. The death and the grave cannot stop God from doing what God is going to do. I said come back to those guards in just a moment. Back in chapter 27, when the, when the Jewish high priest went to have Jesus killed after Pilate 
After Pilate sentenced him to death, Pilate told the Jewish high council that they should secure the tomb as well as they could, as best as they could. So they put a big stone in front of it and they placed guards there to guard it. And when the stone rolled away and the guards fell down as if they were dead, what did that say? Bless you. What does that mean? What does that mean for us? You see, what this story is telling us this morning is it's not about us. Easter's not about us. Easter's not about you or a bunny or chocolate. Easter is about how much God loves you. Because you see, on Easter morning, when Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb, they found that rock rolled away. They found the guards as if they were dead. They found an empty place where Jesus was laying. And what that says to us is that a rock can't stop God. Nor can the principalities or the powers that we think can hold us down stop God. Nor can even death. There's nothing that can stand in the way of what God wants to do for you. There's nothing that can stand in the way of what God wants to do through you. There's nothing that can stand in the way of the love of Christ that comes into each and every one of our lives and empowers us to go into the world and to share that same love with everyone else that we, everyone else that we encounter. Absolutely nothing can separate us from the love and power and grace that God has to shower on us. And that's what Easter is about. Easter is about an unending love and an unfailing love that will not allow Jesus to stay, stay dead. Easter is about a love that fills you with the Holy Spirit and sends you out into the world so that no rock, no principality, no guards, not anything can stand in the way of what God has planned for you to do and to show his love through you to all of the world. Because no matter what we think we've done, no matter how far we think we've fallen away, when we see how much God loves us, God makes us all... Scott? Flawless. Flawless. <laughs> God takes each and every one of us. He takes away all of our mistakes. Not because we deserve it, but because He loves us. And that is what Easter is about. So take that thought that God doesn't love you and completely get it out of your head. Because no matter what you've done or how far you think you've fallen, you've not fallen away from what God has given to you or what God has planned to you. And remember that no rock, no guard, not even death can stop the power of God. Because indeed, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah.